And now I'm going to bring Lee back and he will be walking us through and, and give us a brief introduction of different triggers. Hi, Lee. Well, hi again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the three different types of triggers in DeFi right now? So there are three types of triggers at this moment. It's a schedule trigger or the webhook trigger and the plugin trigger. Okay. So you can choose different triggers uh, yeah, to yeah, trigger your tasks. Oh, okay, awesome. So uh, like, uh, I think the schedule trigger seems like a great starting point for non-technical users like me. So could you please give us a brief overview of this? Yeah, sure. So again, to into the next slide. Yeah. So, uh, in our canvas, you can select the uh, schedule trigger, and you will see there is a slider there for the non-technical users. So you can pick the day and the minute and the yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you can choose what whenever you want to run the triggers. But for the technical users, uh, we use the cron expressions. Uh, a cron expression is a very simple uh, but powerful format used to schedule automatic tasks. Yeah, uh, it tells a system where a specific job should run, whether it's that every minute, every hour, once a day, or a custom recurring schedule. A standard cron expression, as you can see uh, from the image, there are uh, five or six fields and the yeah, at risk, and uh, each representing a unit of time. The first one, uh, yeah, uh, is the minute from starting from the zero to fifty nine, and then the second one is the hour, so starting from zero to twenty six and uh, twenty three, mm -hmm. and you get yeah. The third one is a day of the month, yeah, starting from the uh, first and uh, to the yeah thirty three uh, thirty one, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, the first one is the month uh, starting from one to twelve, and uh, the day of the week is the last one. So zero represents the Sunday, or the seven can represent the, the Sunday. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the the schedule trigger. So you can choose uh, uh, either the the slider way and uh, the crown expression to mm -hmm. to determine when you can trigger the tasks. Mm hmm. Oh, OK, yeah. got it. It's like I can choose uh, I can use the visual picker to choose like daily, hourly, weekly. But uh, for like a precise timing pattern, I can use the cron expression uh, to make it more precise. And this image is definitely like very intuitive and direct for me to understand. So so Lee, I have a question is what if I want to start my workflow? like a trigger based on an event. For example, uh, an email, new email comes in, or maybe a new issue that pops up on GitHub. Yeah, so uh, this comes to the next uh, type of trigger, the plugin trigger. And the plugin triggers are pre-built integrations that connect uh, DP with other uh, SaaS applications. Uh, many services, uh, over public APIs, but integrating them from scratch can be very uh, stressful and uh, slow and complicated. Uh, within the plugin triggers, we can, we package all that stuff uh, completely for you, and the developers can immediately use the events from the tools like the GitHub, Slack, or CRMs without worrying about uh, yeah, authentication or API details. And, uh, yes. You only need to focus on the data you, you have received. And this lets you focus entirely on your business logic uh, while we mm -hmm. can handle the yeah, infrastructure. Uh, yep. Yeah, oh, okay. Triggers make the integrations faster, mm -hmm. simple, and ready for production. So, mm -hmm. in short, uh, we remove the complexity uh, for developers, and the developers focus on the value, and uh, the business can move faster. Oh, okay, got it. So I can see there are different uh, triggers plugin that already exist in the marketplace for us. It's kind of like it's ready anyway. I just need to click and install it and maybe get authorized to get everything moved. So now here comes the next one. So I often hear you guys were mentioning about like web hooks, but, but honestly, it's a little bit big for me. So Lee, help me understand it, please. So the web hook trigger, yeah. 
it's quite a bit, uh, quite straightforward because uh, you can see a hook in the webhook. So it's a think, uh, think of webhook triggers, uh, like fishing. Uh, you cast your fishing lines into uh, the water and just wait. You don't need to keep checking or refreshing anything. When a fish bites the hook, it sends a signal straight uh, back to you. Uh, that's exactly the webhook tricks work. So you give an external service at UIL and uh, you fishing line. And uh, whenever an event happens, like a new message or a new an update, it bites the by sending the data that to the URL instead of constantly uh, pulling for changes, so the event come to you automatically. It's simple, efficient, and uh, always real time, uh, just like uh, a good fishing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for explaining that. I really love the way that you were saying about like the fishing thing, and the fish is automatically comes to me. Thank you, Lee. Thank you so much. So now it comes to our demo part. So I will be the first one to share with the schedule plugin because that will be much more intuitive for us. So uh, Lee will later show you guys about the plugin uh, and the webhook triggers later. So I will share my screen first. Ta da! So uh, this is a workflow that I built for the AI news briefing. As you can see, it starts with a schedule trigger. Uh, well, for me, I directly use the visual picker here. So as you can see, you can choose hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. So I set it to hourly and the time. You can also choose one that works for you. Here, here I set it into like 2, uh, two o'clock and 33 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So this is the schedule trigger. Um, and then here I need to search the AI news for me. Uh, that's why I choose the tably search here. And in the query part, the search query you want to execute with tably, you can input the keywords or instructions that you hope the tably search help you to search in the internet. And here you can also decide the dates. So here I choose one day, which is like 24 hours. And the country that I love to focus is the news in the air news in the United States. Of course, you can feel free to add more details in the, in the query here. And then once we got the information search from the internet, I need the LM to help me filter the results for the most important recent news and then summarize the key takeaways into a concise and daily briefing. And last but not least, I want to make sure that the format looks well uh, and the output is clearly for me to read on Slack. So here you can see, for example, I ask him, do not use different uh, punctuations to make me from feeling confused. And also the headlines should be capitalized with the correct uh, numerical order. And also I asked it for a source link so that if I'm interested in it, I can click and read more information. And last but not least, you have to set up the Slack web hook here and which I've already written a description here. So after this webinar, you will receive this DSL and you can fill up your web hook here for a complete AI news brief for yourself. And there is one thing I would love to share is that if you've updated the time, like the, the, the trigger in the beginning, make sure you click publish to make it to make everything goes online. And I've got a screenshot for showing you how this workflow looks. Hold on. So it looks like this way. This is the workflow that I showed you just now. And here you can see that um, the news just popped out in my Slack channel with uh, capitalized on the uh, title and a, sum uh, and a summary of this piece of news and the source link as well. So uh, schedule trigger is much more friendly for like um, non-technical users like me to start up. And this is might be a very a good way to start for exploring the automation. So Lee, I will hand, hand it to you for your workflow. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, uh, sure, so here I'm going to uh, introduce two types of triggers. Uh, one is uh, the the plugin triggers and another one is the webhook triggers. So starting from the first one, uh, the plugin trigger. So we use a GitHub trigger uh, as a starting node, 
and uh, we we're gonna use some the GitHub tools uh, to fetch the user's information. Uh, and uh, we are gonna to have the LM node and the Slack tool and the output. So uh, let's dive into the first one. Uh, after you have set up the authentication, and you are uh, you can immediately use the the triggers to to receive events. So, uh, but you need to know that the the GitHub trigger is different from the GitHub tools. Uh, there are two types of uh, yeah two tools. Uh, another uh, the Another one is the the tool types, uh, which can fetch the information from the GitHub and uh, do some other jobs, and it, it will be listed in the description. So if you are interested uh, in that, you you can go to the plugins details page. So, uh, and after you uh, receive the events, you will uh, you will be able to get some of the details from the JSON output, and you can get as for example, you can get the user's name. Uh, which is the, the login here, and uh, uh, by using this login uh, username, you can get the user detail information, and uh, you you can use the LM node uh, uh, response for extracting the information, and uh, the problem is uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah, you can add that to the uh, the result of of the previous node as the context. And if you want to uh, enable the context, don't forget to use the slash command here and to add that context here. And after that, you can uh, input the, the user prompt, extract the information, and output using markdown table uh, to format. So it's quite very simple. And here is the webhook uh, for sending the results. Uh, which is a organized uh, markdown table and will send to Anne's channel and uh, Anne will issue that, uh, issue that to you later. So the output is quite straightforward as well. Uh, you can see I can output the LM results directly here or you can just uh, output the, the result of the, uh, the status of the event. And uh, it depends on you. So I'm going to show how, how it works. For example, uh, you can use the debug running here. And uh, I'm going to uh, close an issue, which I have set up previously. So I have already closed that. And uh, it should be able to receive the event soon. Yeah, it's coming. As you can see, the data flows within the nodes. Uh, let's see the first one. Yeah. Yeah, this one. As you can see here, we can receive lots of data in this event. And uh, what we want is the, the user's name, which should be here. Yeah, this one, the login is crazy, Ula, which is my uh, GitHub uh, uh, name. And I, I can use the, use the tool, which come to the next node. So here, here is the result of the, the tool. Uh, it's a JSON format as well. And uh, to the next node, the LM node, you can see the output tag output uh, is formatted in the markdown. Yeah, you can see the results here. Uh, the ID, name, company, blog, and the, the after and the URL. And we, we can send that to the ends channel. So you, you should be able to get something like this. The text images was sent successfully. And that's all about the plugin trigger. It's quite a, uh, straightforward because you can see there is no uh, fancy stuff here. All, the only thing you need to do is to connect all the things and the process you, you can determine by yourself. And the second one is the webhook trigger. So uh, we often use that uh, to use this 
kind of triggers to receive events like, uh, for example, reviewing the the code and fix the code or expand the code. So here is a very uh, simple uh, demonstration of this kind of task. Uh, it's simple for the demo purpose because, as you can see, uh, there are not very uh, yeah pretty much steps here. So the first one is the review process. So, yeah, as you can see, uh, the, here is the original input here. Uh, there is a topic and uh, there is a code uh, which contains the original uh, data here. The web who trigger, yeah, should have a web hook URL and uh, you can use the postman or some other tools to post the, the data to this endpoint and the endpoint should be able to receive the data and uh, execute, execute the, the sub workflows. Yeah, we can do the test run here. I'm going to use the postman to, for example, do the, to do the review job. So as you can see, I will be able to receive the events, uh, from the, yeah, from the webhook. So we can direct see the, the output of, of the review. No, here. So uh, we use the context in the system prompt as well, and we in the user prompt we we just need to type the the reviewing the code and output the code in the following template only, and we. We shall be able to give some comments uh, from the LM. So, as you can see, here is the original data, uh, which is a Python snippet, uh, and to create a Fibonacci <coughs> arrays. <coughs> yeah, and you should be able to get the comments correctly. We use a variable aggregator here because we have a uh, different branches. Uh, <coughs> this is good uh, when you have different branches because you want to aggregate the variables from the different, uh, 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 yeah, different branches. For example, they, they share the same output. As you can see, the output should be some kind of text and we have a text here. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. So here is the the whole workflow of the the webhook trigger. But uh, yeah, don't forget to publish your webhook trigger as well. Uh, as you can see, we have a test run here. We will get a different uh, uh, testing URL because you are, uh, you should be able to see. The UI is different from the the UI here. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah, that's all. Okay. I see. Okay. Thank you so much, Lee. I I, I definitely like into your demonstration, which especially the first one, do you, do you remember the last time we were testing it? And uh, yeah. Lee, after merging that, I remember it's a, a PR or something, then it automatically sends me a message on Slack. So that helps me without like stepping or asking him that how's everything going? Do you have any progress? So that I can understand what is going on here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lee, for sharing this today. Uh, 